I don't know how you could manage to get the gas with 1.9% moisture because in, in Thailand you cannot have wood below 12% moisture. How much? 52, yeah, when, when you get it uh, at the mill, but then if you leave it for some time, I believe it, it should be possible to get it down, yeah. but, but not 1.9%. Uh, it's, it, it, if you talk about furniture dry wood in Europe, the figure is 8%, and furniture dry wood in tropical areas is 12% moisture. Uh, you, you cannot get much less rice husk. Here we, we have uh, 8 to 10 percent, which is very low, some, some of the lowest I believe it's possible to get. Um, talking about combustion technology, then ash content is rather important. Uh, if you have a chain rate, and you have a fuel with hardly no ash, then you might expose the cast iron on the chain rate to very high temperatures from the combustion, and you might not have a very long lifetime. Uh, if you have rice husk, which has got a very high ash content, 17%, here very low ash uh, from uh, brown coal, this is lignite, but if you have a chain rate and your boiler is designed to operate with coal, then you can start using biomass with low S if you mix it with coal, then you can do it without making damage to the grate because you still have an S layer that kind of insulates, protects your chain rate against the radiation. to the first section, so the bottom layer on the chain weight was with coal, and then we had the second half of the tube could be fed with biomass, and then by adjusting uh, the wall in the middle, you could adjust the layer of the coal going in, and then the standard gate you have at the inlet to the furnace could be used to adjust the layer of the biomass. So you had, we call it sandwich firing. So you have like a sandwich with coal in the bottom and then biomass on the top. It's very important that you have a very even layer because the air coming from underneath should meet the same resistance. If you have different resistance, then oh, air is lazy, like uh, most people. If you can find an easy way out, you choose an easy way out, and that's what the air will do. Take the easy way out, then you get uh, a lot of combustion here and nothing there. So make an even layer, and, and if you make mix it uneven, I, I have some pictures uh, from the setup here in Pakistan, where first you put some biomass then you put some coal, and then you get very uneven mixture, and it, it won't work very well. You might save money, but I think also you might uh, have additional operation costs on, uh, on the chain rate. Another way is you uh, make pre-mixing. 
you mix the fuel before you feed it into the boiler. Uh, a completely different setup. Uh, it might be a little bit premature, but what we did in Denmark with one system, because we have seen we want very high steam pressure and very high steam temperature when we need steam for power generation. And if we have high pressure and high temperature for straw, then we get problems with fouling, with clinker, with sticky ash. So what they did was they designed a boiler where the, the water tube top, uh, boiler where you burn the biomass in uh, the section with the water tube and then you burn biomass with very low ash content and very low uh, alkalinity for the superheater. So you have two furnaces in the same boiler where you burn different types of fuel in, in the different furnaces. That's another way of doing it, but it's rather expensive way of doing it. Um, if we compare here uh, the heating value, uh, one kilowatt hour is 860 kilocalories. You for biomass if it's dry. Something we saw from the present uh, drawing is I have seen problems on some boilers where you have tap high potassium content and high sodium, then you get the uh, big problem with corrosive uh, gases potassium chloride and sodium chloride. Something you also have to consider when you design a furnace is the density of the fuel. We have here, this was a gas, this one here was rice straw. It's very bulky. I haven't got it on many of the other, but the, uh, when we talk about straw, straw bales, rice straw and wheat straw in bales, we talk about 400 kilograms per cubic meter. This one, silica, silicium dioxide, 92.7%. This is a high value raw material for quite many things. In Thailand, they made more money on some of the rice was fired boilers, made more money selling the ash than they made from producing electricity. Uh, Silicon dioxide can be used for production of uh, solar panels. Here you can see rice straws with an ash deformation temperature of 1,480 centigrade, which is very high, which means uh, it's an ideal fuel for very high temperature. And that means if you want to produce electricity, high pressure, high steam, then rice husk is a very good fuel for that. Uh, this one here, rubber wood, is also very high. Palm fiber seems to be okay. Palm shell, very high. Palm bunch, less. 1080, I have seen uh, some figures on function less than this, but corn cob, now you have to be careful if you want to produce electricity from biomass fuel, and if you start using corn cob, then you have to be, 
I, I said, keep the pressure, I, I guess, around 40 bar, not, not higher than 40 bar pressure if using concord. spreadsheet uh, later today as promised and with this then you can calculate the heating value on the fuel if you know the composition you can see here I've <coughs> taken the formula up here and put it this one for rice husk I had this one for coal corn cobs, baguettes, rice straw, and then if you have a specific fuel, we can put it in here. But I, my, my ears have been damaged uh, because of too much input noise. Yes? Um, you, you can reduce clinker formation by reducing uh, the combustion temperature. And how to reduce the combustion temperature uh, could be in a waterproof furnace. If you could circulate more water into the furnace, you could reduce the temperature. Uh, if, let's, let's try and, and uh, have a look at the, uh, the previous uh, slide here. Um, for the corn cobs. And that, that means it could be uh, quite easy to get clinker formation. <coughs> and where, where have you found the clinker? In the ash only, or have you had uh, sticky ash going into the boiler as well? So that means you have to start with the steel brush, cleaning quite often. The whole furnace. Well, uh, the furthest loads are many uh, kilowatts per cubic meter of furnace. Then this figure should be low, so you have uh, reduced uh, furnace capacity. And then uh, you should burn at a lower temperature. That means... Uh, Less, less fuel, then you can keep the temperature down and then uh, cooling of the furnace. But you don't build the boiler up, so you, is it less steep? One, one more time, please. If you cool the furnace too much and you keep the temperature of the commercial low, then you are putting in less heat and producing less steam. That's true, yes. And, and that's uh, when we are going to look at uh, the coal fire. If you have a boiler designed for coal and you start to use biomass, then you need a higher amount of flue gas from the biomass to supply the same amount of energy as you get from coal. And your boiler is not designed for that. That means your uh, boiler capacity will come down. You, you might take an oil-fired boiler and convert it to biomass by adding a free combustion furnace or you could put up a dust burner or maybe a, a cyclone where you're uh, fueling it with dust. I have seen uh, some very interesting uh, boilers here, dust-fired boilers basically, and uh, 